back to the Ireland Contracting nightly sports call. If you need a roof, make sure you call Ireland Contracting. Call us right now on the Borders and Borders hotline at 412-575-2600 is the number. Just looking at the stats, Gene. And you see a lot of the Penguins are in the top eight. Sidney Crosby, six points back. Uh, Evgeny Malkin is four points back of um, the lead. Phil Kessel, one point back, 65 points. Kessel had a goal and an assist tonight. So the Penguins are really turning things around at the right time. And, you know, does it surprise you, Gene, that this is like basically the third year in a row that they kind of coasted through the first half and then all of a sudden they just hit the switch and it's a different team? Yeah, I think all hockey teams tend to coast through the first half of the season. I mean, this is what you get when you play really well for a month. Uh, when you're, and you have as much talent as the Penguins have, you'll have people near the top of the league in scoring. It just took some time. Yeah, and the one thing is now you're in the, kind of the home is when people start to pay attention. You know, the trade deadline's coming up, and maybe we'll get into that more, but do you, th do you think the Penguins need a big piece? I know Bob talked to Rutherford the other day, and he said he's not looking for a big piece right now. Yeah, I don't think the Penguins need anything but what they have. Uh, I think they will add someone. Jim Rutherford always does. But d just to answer your question, no, I don't. All right, let's go out to the phone lines. And we're going to go out to Mike out in the south side. How you doing, Mike? Mike, you there? Yeah, I am. Good. So I just want to talk about uh, uh, Mark andre Fleury tonight. You know, with his performance tonight, I thought he played good in that first period. But uh, – and then he just kind of fell apart. I think he kind of really. You know what? I, yeah, I love the way Mark Andre Fleury fate played in the first period, Gene. But it, then it seemed like his emotions got the best of him. And you know, you always saw Fleury when when he started to have a bad game and lose the lead, then just things kind of unravel. And I think that's kind of what we saw here tonight. Well, I think the other thing we saw was that uh, you know there's a really good team playing against him. I thought both goalies played really well. Really well. I think it was an emotional night for Matt Murray also. And uh, I think they both did a great job. Somebody won, somebody lost. Yeah, and you have guys like Evgeny Malkin, Phil Kessel scoring. Yeah. I mean, they're the best in the, the league right now, the number two and number three in scoring. So, yeah, I, I don't think it was a great night by Flurry, but it was, it was a pretty good night, obviously, an emotional night. Let's back out. The phone lines, we're going to go out to, let's go out to David in Finleyville. How you doing, David? Good. How about yourself, Rich? I want to ask either you or Gene if you guys know who claimed uh, Yager off of waivers. I'll hang up and listen to you. Thanks. He, all right. Thanks a lot. He's about 100 years old. No one claimed him. He's headed back to his hometown in the Czech Republic. Do you, I mean, do you think anyone should have claimed the guy? No, I was surprised that Calgary had uh, some use for him at the beginning of the season. Uh, but, yeah, he's playing for Kladno, right? Yeah. So he went back to his hometown uh, team. So, yeah, I mean, he, he, I think – you know, at some point, age gets the best of you when you're playing, when you're, you know, 45 years old and you're playing against guys that are 18. And uh, he just isn't the same guy anymore. And I know a lot of Pens fans out there maybe wanted the Pens to claim him off waivers, but I, I don't think he's a good fit for this team. He probably wouldn't have played uh, much. Uh, if he's not playing in Calgary, he's not going to play for the Penguins. Um, yeah, maybe you bring him back for nostalgia. But other than that, I don't think he's useful for the team. All right, back out to the phone lines. We're going out to Chris in Beachview. How you doing, Chris? Hey, Richie Walsh. How you doing? Thanks for calling. Hey, quick question for you. Do you, do you think there's any chance that Heather Lake will... Uh, okay, well, we cut you off there. Sorry. Um, quick trigger by our producer, John Kimball, back there. Um, I, I don't know what he was going to... I'm not even trying to speculate what he was going to say I there, but... you are. <laughs> okay. Maybe, was he going to ask if Heather Likes going to fire Kevin Stallings? Say he did ask that question. We'll, we'll pretend he asked that question. Okay. Do you think Heather Likes going to fire <laughs> Kevin Stallings? <laughs> well, I don't know. What on Kevin Stallings' resume at this point would prevent it? Let me put it that way. Yeah, you know, I go back and forth with this whole thing. Do you you got to give a guy four years to try to get his players in here, but there just isn't any excitement there. There's just nothing. It's just it's apathy. Uh, people don't even care anymore, and you see that with the, you know, they, they're, they're adjusting their figures at the 2,500 when only 1,500 people are showing up. That just goes to show you that no one cares about pit basketball right now. Yeah, if he uh, served out that contract, he might be the last person in the building. And I, <laughs> you might be right, and I hate to, hate to say that. I, I don't know. I mean, Pitt, maybe Pitt gets one win here down the stretch, Boston College, uh, maybe Wake Forest, but... I wouldn't count on it. I mean, I'm not saying that these players have given up on him. I think the fans have given up on him. 
That's what I kind of think. And, you know, I hate to see people get fired. And I think maybe the one of the big reasons, it, this puts her in a, in, a, in a tough predicament, I think. I mean, they have to, it's like a $10 million buyout. Can Pitt afford to do that? Yeah, that I don't know. I mean, obviously she's in a much better position to know that. But, uh, yeah, you can't go through season after season with this kind of attendance. I mean, it's really embarrassing. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, like I said, I hate to see anyone get fired, but I think at some point you've got to cut the cord and you've got to move on and maybe you can, you can win some of these fans back. Um, because if you bring him back after, say, an O for season or maybe a one-win ACC season, how many fans do you think are going to come back, even if there is optimism that Pitt's going to be good? I, I, I just can't see it getting any better if you bring him back. That was some pretty good non-speculating on that question. Yeah, that was. <laughs> so, all right, let's go out to Joe. And he's on line five out in Carnegie. How you doing, Joe? Hey, guys. Uh, how you doing tonight? Good. Good. Thanks for calling. Good. Uh, I just wanted to say that you got Crowley Road. Okay. Well, you know. That's why we've got the quick trigger. Yeah, we got, we got the quick trigger. John usually does a great job back there. Um, I, I doubt that that got on. Did that get on, John? We probably got a nice shot of the city. I don't even know what the guy said. It's not even funny. It was, it's not even funny. Did, did, did that, you think, that call, he waited on line that long. Did, did you think he made anyone laugh at home with what he did? No. Nope. Just like, what's the purpose? Um, all right, well, you know what? With that call, I'm going to take a break. Maybe we'll read some tweets when we come back or take more phone calls. See you in a couple minutes.